Beach FM kick off sports breakfast show with HMC Car Fee, your local authorised care and Suzuki sales and service agent, and now your local AA Auto Centre. At HMC Carpety, the journey just gets easier. Find out how easy online at hmccarpety.co.nz. You're back on the kickoff sports breakfast show on Beach FM 106.3. Well, big news this week out of New Zealand football. So let's welcome to the show the All Whites coach. It is Danny Hay. G'day, Danny. How are you, Danny? You're right. Yeah, very well. How are you doing at this time? Yeah, very excited. Um, yeah, big news. Uh, hopefully, uh, not just the football public, but the public in general can recognise this is a it's a big opportunity um, for the team and great for the profile of the game. Uh, not just not just myself, but obviously the players are, are incredibly excited about you know, the opportunity to test ourselves against you know one of the one of the best teams in the world and some of the best players in the world. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Before we get into that, I want to take a step back uh, for a second because I love to get inside, um, you know, professionals' minds. Uh, a year ago, you took over. Well, just over a year ago, you took over the side, and then uh, you know the world uh, completely went to went to part. So, how has this time been for you, uh, and managing an international team during an international pandemic? Yeah, obviously, it's been challenging. Um, you know, the fact that we had a couple of good internationals lined up uh, in March against Bahrain and Oman uh, and, and the fact we couldn't actually get those uh, underway due to the COVID pandemic was, was a real blow. Um, you know, last November when we when we got uh, the games against Ireland and Lithuania, we made a really good start. Uh, I thought the environment we created was really positive, uh, something the players are desperate to be a part of. So we just needed... Uh, time together, games together, and the fact that those got cancelled, and then obviously the Nations Cup as well. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a challenging time, but look, we're we're not the only ones in this in this situation. We know that everybody's got their own challenges, so it's it's just been trying to manage it as best as possible. And uh, I guess first and foremost, for, from my perspective, it's just been making sure that um, you know the well being of our players, and there's a lot of young players um, scattered around the world that they've all sort of got through this. Uh, this tough period fairly well. Excellent, mate. And uh, I have to mention the second pl- uh, person ever to both captain and manage the the top side of New Zealand. So how does that feel? Oh yeah, look, when I got the job, it was um, you know it was it was an incredible moment. Um, but I also know that there's a huge amount of responsibility that goes with it as well. And look, uh, for me, it's it's you know trying to trying to take this team. And, and take this job and leave it in a much better place than, than where I found it. Um, I think it's an exciting time for the game. There's, uh, there's a huge amount of uh, young talent starting to emerge. And when you think about some of the established players, Chris Woods and Winston Roods, Ryan Thomas's, Michael Boxer's players that uh, have, have played for the All Whites on numerous occasions, you mix it in with that talent that's starting to emerge. I think, um, you know, we could be seeing some, uh, some exciting uh, and different style of football being played, and that's one thing I've been uh, very vocal about is the fact that I want us to play a style of football that's more re- representative of who we are as a nation, uh, and not so negative, and be a little bit braver with how we approach the game. Brilliant. Well, we've got a few uh, exciting, exciting games uh, possibly coming up. Uh, but that being announced this week, how much effort goes into something like this? When was when was the rumblings started talking and how you could put an international calendar together? Mm, yeah, look, that's it's a it's a great question because there's a lot of work that obviously goes on behind the scenes. Uh, and I think you know, first and foremost, if you go back to COVID, and COVID's actually probably provided us with. Uh, a little bit of a window of opportunity in terms of um, you know some of these big European nations now being forced by UEFA, their governing body, to play three games in each window. Uh, and the uh, UEFA Nations League, uh, for many of them, there's only two games locked in, so they had a they had a spare window, uh, spare opportunity, and we were very very quick to put our hands up. And uh, like I said. Um, a huge amount of work from a number of people behind the scenes, uh, people that have built up relationships with match agents, with uh, different federations over a long, long time. I think people like Rob Pickstock, the work that he's done. Um, and then obviously our CEO, Andrew Pagno as well, you know, having the appetite, to, uh, even in these challenging times, to explore opportunities for the All Whites, um, to try and get them playing. And I think it's just a great sign um, not just not just for the public, but but really importantly for me and the players, 
that um, he's very keen to, to get the All-Whites out there and playing the best quality opposition that we can do. What kind of things are in place, mate? Because you've seen, a, I've seen a lot of different sports adapting different bubble models, etc. Uh, how, how do you how do you put your safety at, at, at the premium when you're going to possibly Belgium, uh, obviously England, mm. with other uh, possibly other games in, in between? Yeah, look, that, that's that's a challenge, and that's that's the first thing that we've got to consider. So. You know we've got um, we've got a very good uh, medical team. Um, we've got people like Mark Fulcher who's on the FIFA Medical Council. So we're we're just taking uh, advice from them. Obviously they're the experts. Uh, they know and are going to put protocols in place in terms of ensuring that the the team and the staff uh, are as safe as possible. But as we all know, it's a it's a very much a challenging time. And uh, I think that's one thing to to really make clear is there's still a a massive big if over, over these games yeah. because, uh, you know, we're trying to bring players from different countries, you know, on the, the drop of a hat, you can get different governments uh, changing their stance on travel restrictions. So it's, yeah, it's, it's very much a challenging time. Like I said earlier, there's a real appetite for, for us to obviously get these games, you know, actually happening and on the pitch. Um, but at the same time, we've got to be aware that uh, this is a fluid situation, that it's ever changing, that, you know, uh, tomorrow things could change rapidly because of different situations in different countries. Absolutely. Let alone, let alone the the restrictions, etc. You've you've probably got your own uh, selection headaches. I know um, you can use European based uh, players. The Major League Soccer won't release any players. But I mean, I can only imagine a lot of people putting their hand up. It would be every boyhood's dream, wouldn't it, to wear the wear the uh, country on your chest and, and play at um, the world's most famous football arena? Yeah. Well, exactly. Um, look, we've got a number of number of players based throughout Europe. Um, it's a it's a real blow at the moment that it's that it's looking like uh, the MLS as an organisation and their clubs are not going to release their players for the international windows. Um, and obviously, even the players uh, at this part of the world, New Zealand, Australia, a uh, couple in South Africa, it's, it's proven to be some real challenges in terms of trying to get them out of the country and, and more importantly, how we how we would get them back. Um, and we know the, the the travel restrictions at the moment, the limited amount of flights, the quarantine. Uh, so there's yeah, there's some real challenges, and even inside Europe, um, we're finding at the moment that you know certain countries, certain governments are, are putting uh, restrictions in place. So that's making it even more challenging. So look, fingers crossed, we're we're desperate to get these games, you know, sort of over the line, as I said. But um, yeah, we've got to be mindful that uh, there's certain things happening around the world that are, that are beyond our control. Absolutely, mate. Last question I've got is, how is that side looking? Do you have it in your mind? Is it, is it starting to come together? Yeah, oh, look, it's it, it's difficult. I do, I do. But then, like I said, it, it, it can change um, very, very quickly because, um, for instance, you know, I might even be a European player. Um, their country then puts travel restrictions in place. Yeah. Uh, and I think of one player in particular who's who's a key player for us uh, and will be for many years. And, you know, we can't jeopardise him and his career by bringing him into an international uh, game, an international environment, and then he's got to sit two weeks in quarantine as he heads back into his home country and, and loses his place in his club environment. And at the end of the day, um, these guys are professionals. That's their job. Um, playing for their country is something they are desperate to do. But at the same time, we've got to look at the, the bigger picture. And if we've got uh, guys playing regularly in good leagues and good clubs, then ultimately the All-Whites, when it really counts, are going to be much better off for that. Fantastic, mate. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, go well with everything uh, coming up. I know it's going to be crazy times for you. I, I know you've already joked about coming re- uh, retirement. So uh, just uh, <laughs> stay, stay stretched, mate, and uh, you, you, you never know. But look after yourself and, and the team and all the best for you guys. Yeah, good on you. Thanks for that. Danny Hay, the coach of the All Whites. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after these.